Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, welcome. Thank you for your service and thank you for the heroic service of the men and women at the FBI. Um, Congress has now heard from numerous law enforcement uh, officials that uh, there is significant evidence that the January 6th attack on the Capitol was premeditated, planned, and coordinated. And you just had an exchange with Senator Klobuchar where you, if I understood you correctly, expressed the FBI's view that it was indeed planned and coordinated. Uh, I recognize this is an ongoing investigation and that you're still learning uh, the details, but at this point, what do we know about the planning and coordination uh, that, that occurred surrounding the January 6th attack? So uh, I guess let me s step back and say first thing is um, there are sort of three groups of people involved in January 6th. The first group, the largest group, the group we need to spend the least time talking about is peaceful, maybe rowdy protesters, but who weren't violating the law. Then there's a second group, think of a reverse pyramid, a second group that is people who may have come intending to just be part of peaceful protests, but either swept up in, in the motive or emotion or whatever, uh, engaged in kind of low-level criminal behavior, trespass, say, on the Capitol grounds, but not breaching the building. Still criminal conduct still needs to be addressed, but more on the fly, in the moment, opportunistic. The third group, the smallest group numerically, but by far and away the most serious group, are those who, uh, who breached the Capitol grounds, who engaged in violence against law enforcement, who attempted to disrupt the members of Congress in the conduct of their constitutional responsibilities. And of those, some of those people clearly came to Washington, we now know, uh, with, with plans and intentions to engage in the worst kind of violence we would consider domestic terrorism. And so some of that coordination uh, appears to have been coordinated travel, uh, coordinated meeting up, coordinated in terms of what kind of gear they might be wearing or bringing with them, that kind of thing. Uh, Again, ongoing, obviously ongoing, much more to come. But You know, often in an investigation, um, law enforcement follows the money. Uh, is there evidence at this point of coordinated funding prior to January 6th, providing military equipment, providing communications equipment, uh, or the like? Certainly, that's a topic that we're looking at. Uh, I don't know that there's anything I can say right now in terms of funding or coordinated funding. Um, there's been considerable discussion at this hearing also about the, the Norfolk report. Um, at the time, how credible and, and reliable did the FBI consider the Norfolk report as, as an actionable piece of intelligence? Uh, my, Senator, my understanding is that our folks at the time uh, viewed it as raw, unverified, and therefore of unknown reliability information. But because of the level of detail that was in it, um, and some of this is art, not science, unfortunately, in the world of intelligence, the judgment was uh, that given the press of time, given the specificity in it, even though it sounded somewhat aspirational in nature and was unverified, the smartest thing to do, the most prudent thing to do was just to push it to the people who needed to get it. And as I said, that happened three different ways. Um, you had a conversation with Senator Grassley about the, the death of Officer Sicknick, and, and there obviously is considerable interest and concern in the Senate and, and across the country as, uh, as to the circumstances of Officer Sicknick's death. There have been conflicting reports uh, about the circumstances of his death. Uh, you told Senator Grassley the FBI at this point is not in a position to confirm a, a cause of death. Uh, is there any information uh, that the FBI can share with the American people about what we know of the circumstances surrounding his tragic death? Uh, although I I'm, uh, certainly understand and appreciate the keen interest in it for all the reasons we've discussed, uh, at the moment, other than to say the Capitol Police has, of course, categorized it, I think, appropriately as a line of duty death, there's nothing really that I can share right now. Certainly, I understand why it's very much top of mind for people, and I think it speaks well of the members of Congress that they're so interested in somebody who's lost his life protecting all of you. So as soon as we're in a position uh, when the investigation has gotten to a stage where we can share information, we, we want to be able to do that. 
Now let's talk more broadly about domestic terrorism, uh, because the riot on January 6th didn't occur, come out of nowhere. Um, and last year, the Department of Justice created a task force to investigate and understand the growth of political violence. Uh, the memo creating the task force states, amid peaceful demonstrations protected by the First Amendment, we have seen anti-government extremists engage in indefensible acts of violence designed to undermine public order. Among other lawless conduct, these extremists have violently attacked police officers and other government officials, destroyed public and private property, and threatened innocent people. Uh, is, is that task force still operating? Uh, I know the work uh, that the task force began is still ongoing. Um, in the past year, we have seen massive rioting and violence uh, as extremists, many of them leftist extremists, took to the streets across the country. In just two weeks at the end of May and early June, over 700 law enforcement officers were injured. Looking at all of 2020, over 14,000 people have been arrested in 49 cities, and at least 25 people have died in the violence. And it's estimated that the property damages from these riots could exceed $2 billion. What is the FBI doing to counter this, this ongoing pattern of, of domestic terrorism? So, Senator, uh, certainly we uh, tried to respond aggressively with our partners to uh, the domestic violent extremism that we saw playing out in streets all across the country this summer. Um, uh, most of that activity, a lot of that activity, I would say, fell in what we would categorize as anti-government, anti-authority violent extremism. Some of it is anarchist violent extremism. Some of it is militia violent extremism. Some of it might even be sovereign citizen violent extremism. But we saw a, a huge uptick in violent extremism in that broad bucket over the course of last year. Uh, and so we're trying to be aggressive with the tools that we have in terms of the charges we're bringing. We're trying to, as we talked about, frankly, in connection with January 6th, same thing for the summer. We're trying to look at sources of funding, planning, coordination, trying to learn more about tradecraft and tactics and things like that so that we can be better prepared to prevent it and feed information to our state and local partners so they can be better prepared to prevent it. Uh, as, as I think I said to, uh, to Senator Grassley, uh, last year, uh, we had three times the number of anarchist violent extremist arrests uh, from, say, uh, the prior year, I think it was. Certainly more last year than the prior three years combined. Um, we did see last year, uh, as Senator Grassley noted in his opening comments, the first uh, murder by an anarchist violent extremist um, last year in quite some time, certainly. Uh, which was the individual who in Portland uh, killed a, a supporter of an opposing viewpoint. And then the, the individual in question, the, the violent extremist, was himself killed in a, in a shootout as the marshals were trying to apprehend him. Thank you.